thanks. Um, okay, let's start. My name is uh, Florian Fuchs, and this talk is about Maimon 3 and Django. Uh, I don't know if you have noticed that Maimon is, you know, only, you know, minutes or seconds, just a few moments before a new uh, version change to version 3. Um, so this talk is specific, specifically about Maimon 3. Uh, some quick words about me. I um, live and work as a freelance web developer in Berlin. I do a lot of work with Python and Django, and, but also quite a bit of work with uh, front-end technologies. Um, I also do some open source work. I'm on the Maimon 3 dev team, uh, which I joined a couple of years ago. And um, as he said, I mostly work on things that have to do with the web UI for the list management and uh, the REST API. Okay. Um, so, what is this talk about? Um, well, Maven 3 has um, two new web UIs for list management and archiving. List management meaning creating lists, subscribing people to them. Uh, archiving meaning um, making messages that get through, uh, sent through the system, searchable and browsable. And we decided to use Django for both of them. So I'd like to show you how you can use um, and it, how you can use and integrate uh, those um, Django apps that we have built, and how you can use uh, Maven 3's internal APIs to write to write your own Maven related applications in Django. So um, quick warning: this um, Maven 3 is still in better state, uh, but you know, we're, as I said, we're not not far away from a full release. Um, okay. Uh, Quick overview over the architecture of Maven 3 from the view of a web developer. Well, I have to tell you, when I joined the Maven team a couple of years ago um, to start working on a web interface for, for version 3, um, the development of version 3 was already well underway, so most of the code was there. And when I started, I had absolutely no idea what Maven did internally. And the good thing was I didn't have to know that because in Maven 3, there are some very clearly defined APIs that you can use as a web developer to um, write any kind of, of interfaces you like. Um, so um, let's see what the actually components are. There's some module, some component that we call the Maven core. It's um, the actual Maven Python package that gets imported imported when you start Maven, and well. It retrieves emails from list members or people sending emails to a mailing list, and it distributes them to the list members. Of course, it does a lot of other things internally, and it's a really extensive piece of software. Um, but right now, we don't need to know too much about what it does. Um, OK. For list management, Maven 3 has a REST API that you can use. It's um, JSON-based, and it's local. It's a local API, to, um, so it's language agnostic, and um, it's not intended to be used over a public network. Um, uh, but it speaks uh, HTTP, which is pretty nice. Um, and we also have some Python bindings. There's a library called Maven Client, which I will tell you something um, more uh, a little later. And uh, you know, it turns all these HTTP calls to the REST API into nice Python objects that you can operate on. So this REST API can, uh, can be used to manage lists, meaning creating lists, subscribing, unsubscribing, uh, moderating messages, um, changing preferences, and so on. The other internal API that is provided by the Maven core is uh, the iArchiver interface. And um, this is a Python API. It's based on ZOAP interface. I don't know if you're familiar with ZOAP interface or interfaces in general. And it's, well, it sounds worse than it is. Pretty easy to use. It's a Python the API that gives you access to every list post that leaves Mailman. So if someone sends a message to a mailing list and um, the message gets through, so it's not moderated, it's um, the person is um, a legit legitimate sender to that email list, um, this API will give you access to a copy of that email that gets sent out to all the list members. Um, we have two Django applications that can be installed that use Maven 3. Um, one is called Posterius. This is the app we use for list management. 
the funny name has, uh, well, it's a mixture, mixture of the fact that um, many people use jazz, re jazz music references for their, when they name their, uh, their, their Django apps. It also has to do with email and dead bass guitar players. So. Um, and what's worth noting about Postorius is um, that it has been created in large parts by students who have been participated in the Google Summer of Code, which is a really nice program that Maimon has been participating in as a sub-org of the Python Software Foundation. And um, there have been a number of students during you know, the last years who have um, implemented features for Postorius, which is so kudos to all those students. And um, yeah, actually one of those students has given a uh, DjangoCon talk at DjangoCon Europe about form sets because she used form sets, Django form sets uh, in her Postorius um, project. That's so if you don't know about form sets, you to should uh, totally check it out. The other app, Django application that, that's there to use with Maimon is um, called HyperKitty, and this is the new mailing list archiver. It has been created by a couple of people at Fedora who have done amazing work. It looks really nice, has, has a really nice UI. Uh, it has some built-in statistics, so you can see which, um, which email lists get, get the most attention. Uh, the threads are displayed very nicely. And um, also, you can post to... Uh, um, to mailing this directly from the archiver interface, which is great because you know, some people just don't like to use the email clients all the time, so that's nice. So um, let me show you some, some really random screens of the two interfaces. This is the post series list index page. Well, it has some, I created some dummy lists today. Um, a page to edit your subscription preferences, whether you like to have um, to, to, to get uh, daily delivery uh, as a digest or immediate delivery, stuff like that. So these are very random screens. This is the archive index for HyperKitty. As you can see, you have nice little uh, um, graphs that show you the, um, the activity index of those lists. Um, this is an overview of all the threads of a certain list. By the way, these screens are taken from um, a demo that the Fedora people have set up to test their HyperKitty development. So um, if you want to check it out further, you have to Google Fedora and HyperKitty and demo. So how can you install and integrate those applications? Well, there's one installer to get them all. It's the Mailman Bundler. It lives on Launchpad. Um, you can download this project. And if you um, install it, it will download Mayman, Posterius, and HyperKitty uh, with all their de dependencies and will install it on your system. And it will make it pretty easy to hook it up to your, uh, to your local uh, mail server and to your web server. Um, this package also provides a separate Django project for which holds Posterius and HyperKitty with all, with all the settings um, they need. So um, you might say, well, I already have a Django site that I'm running on my server, and I don't want to put up another Django project. So could I just, can I just please just integrate Posterius and HyperKitty? Um, of course you can. Both uh, live on pip, Maven 2, of course. And um, you can just install them, plus some settings that you have to add to your um, existing settings file that, depending on whether you, you want to install both of them or only one of them, you can check out these two example projects um, to see, um, to check out the necessary settings that you have to add. So other than that, they're behaving just like pretty much um, every other um, reusable Django apps that you can just put into your installed app setting and, and, and you're good to go. So one of the more interesting parts is how you can write your own Maven apps. How can you actually use those um, the, those APIs that I was talking about for list management and archi um, archiving. So say you have your existing Django site and now you have installed Mayman and it's pretty, running pretty smoothly and you have um, used Postorius maybe to set up your lists and or uh, you use HyperKitty, but you, on, your, on your site you want to have maybe a single view which um, you can edit yourself which holds a subscription form for a, set for a certain list. How would, you, how would you be able to do that? Well, um, maybe remember I was talking about Mayman Client, the Python bindings library that does all the HTTP calls for you. 
Uh, first, first thing you have to do, of course, is install it. It lives on, you can, it's, you can find it on the cheese shop as well. And then the next thing you do is you import the client class from the Maven client package. Um, by the way, this is not a typo. It, the project is called Maven.client, um, but the package is, made, uh, is, is called Maven client so, because it doesn't sit in the Maven namespace. So um, you create an instance of, instance of that client class um, by giving it the, um, providing it with the local uh, REST API URL and a username and a password. These are the default values, and you can change them in, the, in your global um, Maven config file if you want to. You should do, of course. So um, the first thing you do when you start with a clean slate is create a domain. Maven can operate a number of domains, just like many machines you know, serve different domains for, for websites. Um, Maven can uh, serve different domains as well. So you add your own domain, I call it mydomain.org, and it will return a domain object that you can operate on further. This domain object, for example, has a create list method uh, that you can use to create two lists. Well, by the way, maybe you've noticed I've put some small uh, comments below each of these statements um, to indicate the URLs that are actually called when you uh, execute those statements. So once you've created your lists, those lists show up in the client's list property. We'll, yeah. So you can see what's there. If you want to operate on, um, on a single list, you can get the list object from the client's get list method. And you can use that, uh, that list, uh, list object to subscribe and unsubscribe people um, to, from that list. Um, you can also provide it with, a, with an optional username, um, which Maven might or might not use um, when sending out messages. Um, so, and once you have subscribed someone, this person, this member will show up in the, in the list objects members property. So, this is just a very simple example, but you know, the, the principle is Maven client gives you objects with methods that might return other objects that you can operate on. And this is just uh, the most basic use case to uh, create lists and um, subscribe people to it. You can also moderate messages, um, change list preferences, and so on. So the documentation is, um, sits in a REST file, uh, in the RST file in the Maven client package. Don't think it's um, on Python hosted or read the docs. I have to. I have to change that. So, how would you use that in a in a Django view? Well, there are obviously many ways to do it. I chose one, well, example that fit on a on, on a single page. Um, it's um, it's a very simple class based view. It has a get method and a post method. And it has a separate property method um, that returns the client instance, so we don't repeat ourselves. Um, well, if we take a look at the get method, the first thing that happens, um, the list object is retrieved um, through REST from the client, um, from Maven client, through Maven client. And we'll, yeah. Then there's an imaginary subscription form, which probably holds just an email address depending on what your needs are. And um, so the list description and the form are uh, provided um, to the, to the uh, request context. So if someone actually posts, um, uh, submits this uh, sub sub subscription form, um, the form is instantiated with um, the request post data which should be uppercase, not lowercase. <laughs> and if the form is valid, um, the person who submitted the form um, is subscribed as a list member. And then you just usually redirect to, the, to wherever, whatever your target page is. So um, as I said, this is just a very basic example. You could also use a simple uh, view function or um, if you have several Maven views, you might maybe 
put the client instantiation method, which sits in the client property here, in a utility function. So, yeah, this is just one example. Okay, now um, what we have done is we have, say, you have installed Mayman and the web UIs, and now you have created your own page with your own Mayman functionality. And you say, well, I'm still not happy. I have one list which is a little bit different than all my all the other mailing lists that I'm hosting, and it's it's a private list. It shouldn't go into a public archiver, and um, or any usual traditional archiver as well. And um, it's say it's a support list, and the list members are your the 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 support staff of your organization, and uh, you want to get a copy of each message that gets sent to the to this list and, and, and process it in a different way. You want to store it into your Django database to display it in Django admin or whatever. Um, so in order to do that, you would um, be able to use the iArchiver interface. So this is a very simple example how to use the iArchiver interface. This is um, as I said, the Python interface. And basically what you have to do is um, create a class that implements three methods, methods and has one name property. The first method is um, the list URL method, which uh, should return a URL um, where, uh, where you list summary page can, can be found. It's just something that Maven puts into the email header. It has another method that you must implement, which is the permalink method. It doesn't have to. Uh, it doesn't have to return anything. Um, if you want to, you can you can return uh, a separate URL for each method that you can calculate. Um, but you can also return none. Uh, but you have to still have to implement that method. And the really interesting stuff sits in the archive message method. Um, and there you have access to Mayman's internal mailing list um, object, the mailing list that this message is sent to, and a message object which is cast to a string but also has get methods to access the um, message headers. And the way for the Maven core to know that you have correctly implemented um, your your archive class is it uses Zope interface. Um, you've probably noticed, noticed the implemented decorator on top of the class. Well, it basically says Maven, okay, this is a class that implements the iArchiver interf interface. And before you run it, um, you can check if it's if everything's there that's needed. So that's the one thing you have to do when creating an. Um, an, uh, an, an, an iArchiver um, class for a custom archiver. The second thing you have to do is, of course, you have to tell Maven about it. So um, there's your central Maven config file. Uh, and all you have to do is add a section uh, which starts with the archiver and a dot and then the name of your archiver. Um, it has a class property, and this is the Python path to your archive implementation. And then, of course, we have to enable it. And if you want to, you can add a, um, some configuration for your, um, for your custom archiver. So if you have some extra configuration that this archiver class might use, might use, you can put it there. So again, how would you use that in the Django context? Um, Um, you might think, well, that sounds good. I can just import uh, my my models. I have, you know, in this example, there's an imaginary my list post model model. And um, if you would import it uh, at the top of the file, it would raise an um, uh, improperly configured error because. When, Ma when Maven imports this, um, this, this module, this class, um, you're outside of your usual Django environment. So um, there's no whiskey app instance, and um, you know, the settings are unknown. 
So what you have to do is uh, you have to set up your Django environment by setting the Django settings mod uh, module um, environment variable. And um, of course, you shouldn't probably hard code it, but um, you know, this, uh, otherwise it wouldn't have, uh, have fit onto the page if um, I wouldn't have, you know, I, if I wouldn't have put it like that. Okay, and then after you've done that, you can import your your your, your Django model and um, and save whatever informa information you might um, you might want to uh, read from the message file. Again, the message uh, property that is handed to the archive message uh, method um, uh, the, it has a string rep representation which is the complete message source, and you can use Python's built-in email passage to iterate over each line, so you get the raw uh, email body uh, and the subject and the date. So whatever you information uh, you you, um, you want to to read from that, you might probably want to use the email package um, for that. Okay. Um, so. Um, as with many open source projects, you're welcome to contribute. We are a small group of people that are very enthusiastic, but um, also have, like also with many other open source projects, not the time that we'd like to to, um, to, uh, um, to work on it. Um, also, since we are just you know short before, before a new major release of Maven version three, it would be nice to have more bug reports. So, if you got interested. Um, subscribe to Maven Developers at python.org, uh, which ironically runs on Maven 2. <laughs> um, we also have an, IS, an IRC channel on Freenode.net. Uh, you can check out our wiki. A lot of the documentation is there. And if you have specific questions for me, um, my IRC handle is Florian F, and I, um, I also hang out a lot on Maven, on the Maven channel. So, um, Thank you very much. <laughs>